probably going to outscale Team Spirit's heroes. I love it. I love the draw. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan too. I think uh, to just hype up what Spirit can do is they can have a really strong laning stage. You're looking at Viper, Marcy lane. Uh, you've got Fuck Dazzle, go. Ursa, who at least have the potential to win that lane, even though it doesn't always go Ursa's way against the Timber. Uh, and then they've got the more active, more mobile mid laner to make plays on the map. So Spirit need to have a good lane, need to be aggressive and find those kills, because otherwise they lose to TB late game. Yeah, both of you have very fair points. It's hard for me to go one way or the other. I really like Collapse Viper. I think that if he gets a good laning stage with the Marcy, he can kind of crush that mid game and it should go Team Spirit's way. Gotcha. In my two, two to one. Two to one is what we're, we're looking at here. Well, well, we'll find out soon enough, but we got the lovely casters, Lyrical and Trent, to take. Thank you so much, Nikki and Trent. I'm so excited for this one. We got to cast so much of Eastern Europe throughout the whole DPC, and now they meet together on the big stage. I mean, you'd love to see them play other regions, but it's pretty cool to see them play again. Yeah, you know, they they don't actually play that much all year either, right? right. You know, you get to see your buddy in the DPC, and then you go play some other. I think they have the pacing that they need uh, for this lineup. Was to work. it just the name? That's why you just want spirits? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Good, good job. Spirit with spirits. Yeah, it's really all you need. No, I think that uh, the panel has great points. I do think this is a, a timing-based game. That just Team Spirit have a very significant lead that they want to grow during that laning stage and then push into that enemy side of the map. And it's going to be hard to get back in this game in some ways because like, there's going to be the Dazzle Hex, we've seen that versus Terribly. Pretty annoying about all those illusions. So uh, we'll see if they're going to hit those marks they need, though. Well, we'll see as we get into this game number one. Another thing that was just tweeted out recently from the information, the lovely Knoxville, because of the results of that LGD series, this series actually determines who is qualified the TI. Muted right at the Start. Love that. All right, good stuff. Um, okay. Now, yeah, if, if you had him muted, you, you would know. You, know, you wouldn't know that he was so so clearly. You know. Mm, you know. That's true. Muted now, I guess. Is what yeah. you're saying. Huh? Good. Good choice. Good choice here. He's making him use it APM early. That's yeah. what's going on. Collapse already knows what's happening. But yeah, a lot of implications for this game for both of these teams want to make their uh, way over. Oh, that's pinged out though. So they saw that smoke. Dazzle with the early ward placed down. They know that uh, all of the side of Outsiders is down bottom. Yeah, pretty sneaky ward that he's got there, right? Outside of the high ground there. So unlikely to be deep ward. It gives you a little bit less info, but... Uh, question is, can you really capitalize on this? <laughs> They're gonna try and sit mid and see if they do the big cross through. And you know what? They are going for it right now. Dude, formation. They, they've done the math. They know what's happening. Do they send somebody out to try and be a, a little bit of a bait here? It doesn't look like it. So won't get caught at the very least. Doesn't look like there's the going to be any uh, early skirmishes either. Wait, are we sniping a mid courier? Is that what's happening here? Is that, is that what this board tells me? I mean, that'd be kind of cool. They're They're hanging out. Maybe they're just waiting for them to walk back over to go to lane. But even then, you don't oh. have enough to do. Yeah, I don't think so. They're just going to throw out the concussive and then back away. No, trying to figure out what these lane setups are from outsiders, right? You know, they want to see what uh, Team Spirit are up to. And then, well, they're just going to do collapse in the bottom and, and send Yonder up top. And that means, I mean, they're sticking the tusk down here for a little bit longer. They obviously know the Skyrath is in the area, mm -hmm. but this looks to me like an attempt at first blood down bottom. And who are they going to go for? Damage shows up. Okay, maybe not. Maybe Yokota's just hanging out down here for a second, and then he's going to TP away. And this is one of those situations that uh, kind of works out for both teams, right? Because in a sense, like, DM is playing the Timbers on. Obviously, you really want a good start on this hero, especially when you have a, a Terra Blade who we're assuming is probably not going to have the best time. So there's going to be some pressure on you in, in that really part of the game to try and make moves. But, oh, there you go. Rebound, jump there. Don't even need the dispos. Oh, 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 era. Oh, yeah. That Radiant is rough Curry in this tri lane versus tri lane that now we've set up getting the first blood and then also a courier snipe. So Ramsey's no regen at all. Sky's gonna have to come back with a bow. <laughs> this guy with the Dyer's aether on the way out at the very least on the GPK, nice, nice trade. This will be interesting to watch if they uh, continue with this tri lane. I mean, again, Timber saw facing mm -hmm. off one and one uh, against the Ursa. Right. So this is where you, we talk about how like Ursa is a pretty good counter Timber, especially in the laning stage, because obviously you can get the Furious Wipes. But this is what ends up happening. If you get a 1v1, then you just split the lane. Like, the wave just gets pulled apart. Ursa doesn't really get to benefit from all the uh, the benefits that you have in terms of having the Furious Wipes and everything. And Timber's just going to run away from you. He's going to catch the wave somewhere else once he's a couple points of reactive armor, and you don't get to push the advantage you should have. And instead, this happens. 
down bottom where they managed to get the kill onto the Viper. So that was the metamorphosis used mm -hmm. and early pressure being thrown back the way of uh, Team Spirit by Outsiders. And, and now the importance here for Team Spirit is they need to punish when this meta is down, right? You can't just like abandon this tri lane at this point. And a couple punches, a couple body blocks, damage, taking some damage. Mira now shots oh. in. They will lose the Tusk Mira, a couple more punches, and almost able to survive, but Ramses gets it with the reflection there. Some nasty spells. It you know, is. A little bit of poison attack, a little bit of poison touch, poison all the way down. And in the meantime, that does leave us in a complete 1v1 mid, although they do rotate in. Uh, one hero, the Dazzle, to secure the water rune. So mm -hmm. Maposhka takes that away, and that sets Toronto Tokyo up to have uh, the bottle refill there. Oh, then you know what's next after that, of course, would be uh, the bounty runes, but Maposhka, no, not dealing with that. Uh, not for now. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, you want to punish this Terrorblade whenever that Metamorphosis is down, and Ramsey's taking a chunk of damage, but Mira might have gone a bit too far here. And stuck over, saves that rebound for that entire period. What a hero. Dude, I mean, that was all no. a bait. The image is going to get punished and killed. Oh, yeah, you got to get the full uh, chain down there for one kill. And as you can see, up top, observe for showing, like, look, look at him. DM's just running around. He's actually going to scurry. He won't just scurry around with a giant horde of his own units. I mean, I don't know about that one. So this is just, the matchup does not go Ursa's way in this case at all, right? Because, I mean, again, yes, now on top of how, like, a Timber's getting a free game and Ursa's also getting a free game. And True. Go through the battle here a little bit more comfortably. He's going to have excellent scaling. So this can actually help increase the window that Team Spirit have in terms of this, like, this concept of, like, dominating the leading stage and really Your controlling the outsider's side of the map. You have more leeway when, when you get an amazing start for your Ursa like this. Yeah, it gives you a lot more freedom, for sure. And again, any time any of these supports leave the lane, it starts to get very hard to stand close to that Viper at all. Already nine denies on the Viper. Mm -hmm. And Terrorblade just having to wait for that meta to come back up again before they can really contest. You also saw Yamich, because they can't contest in the lane, he went mid to try and help with the bound or the uh, the water room. But because Tron Tokyo has the Aether Remnant, he can just sit it right on top, had a great timing, and ensured that even with that minimal uh, duration on the pole, mm -hmm. he, he still got the water room for free. No contest there from Yamich. Did another pull through too. Down bottom. That is that is frustrating. Yeah, they, they have just not been able to get the Terrorblade to the lane at all. And now Mira runs in aggressively, finds TP the silence to stop Dying the poison attack. But Ramsey still might be in trouble as he is slowly burning down to that poison touch. He's low. And I mean, even if he's not dead at this point, this is a, a catastrophe of a lane. Yeah, Radiant they have a couple salves they can throw out there. At least a little salve and a couple tangos, I should say. So, uh, good news, he didn't use meta. Didn't try and go for an immediate turn, because I don't think they had the damage for it. So, at the very least, that's not down. But, yeah, it's going to be a, a little bit before they can find that moment to get back into it. <laughs> what is I don't know if we just keep getting the constant pictures of DM just, like, yeah. <laughs> farming the lane and the neutrals, right? The, the worst-case scenario. That's why he's uh, at the top in Lazitz and just dead even right now with the Earth in terms of net worth. Level 6 is up top. Uh, Timbersaw probably the, the hero that can much more so, um, unless there's some crazy shenanigans going on, but obviously has the Enrage to deal with that big hulk of damage that comes through. Ramsey's popped the meta, and it's just leaving the lane. He's done. Yeah, well, same thing for Yadro, uh, because it's a level 6 Timber, and he just used Enrage, and so he has to go back, get his salve, and it's, it's scary, right? So this is where the rotation comes through. This is where... You try and bait DM to go aggro again, and then Mira's gonna try and jump in and get a turnaround play. DM, there it is. No. Chase, Bose, he was slowed by the charm room, though. They can't get on top of him. DM just gets away, so the gank will not succeed. And then that timber chain, four second CD, even at level one, so keeps him pretty safe. And yeah, careful now. Mira in trouble. A couple more punches. Dies to the timber chain. DM is having a hell of a game. Yeah, you thought, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Come up here and help your Ursa, yeah, I don't think so. I'm a free farm and timber saw, it's gonna stay that way. And just nobody rotating mid uh, either, or out of mid, I should say, as both heroes level six now. Yeah, what happened to the six heroes mid at six minutes like every other game that we cast? So it's, a, it's a sort of honor thing here in the mid lane. Uh -huh. You know, Yadaro, uh, he actually has Yadaro. Um, GBK wants you guys to follow his socials. Step lively yeah. now, so your admiral get in is there, on board. Help, help a guy out. So we get back into this, only six and a half minutes into the game, and Outsiders 
hoping to put the pressure on Yadro to free up some space for Ramses, who is three levels behind him. I mean, I'm just watching Yamash trying to hang out in the lane right now. He's like under an OBS and a sentry. It's like kind of trying to punch the creeps, but then there's a Viper. He's like, what am I Dyer's supposed to do here? Try to pull this over attack. or something? But they even have the vision on that. Yeah, he'll be able to come oh, and contest oh, that. Couldn't even get it. Oh, that hurts. All right, I'm just gonna hang out in this lane, I guess. That's, that's Yamich's job for this game is Hakoda, DM, yeah, getting in there close. Silence, no enrage for you. And has the enrage afterwards. Mira right on top, jumps in. DM still chasing, threatening, almost gets it, forces it out, now turns on the two, it's 2v3. It's still not good enough for Team Spirit. Oh, GP can't come through with that. DM looks to the side, but not able to get him. Just barely escaping the Yadro. That was a big old chunk of Tidebringer, wasn't it? That's what a DD does. But GPK now wants to chase Claps. Oh, he went backwards. He didn't think he was going to find him there. Dyer's and so after throwing the Torrent, attack. connects on the Tidebringer, it is still a little bit tough to make that gank work without the uh, Torrent, even though he has the boat. Yeah, it's a bit much, even with the, you know, the threat Dyer's of the rotations coming through from the allies to help attack. out. Certainly gonna be an Dyer's issue, but well, Chief Gate is gonna continue by trying to farm up in towards that BKB so that he can really be the frontliner of this game in combination with the Terra Blade and really give this space over to Ramsey. Something that's kind of important. Maybe he doesn't have to get BKB as early, right? If he can get some proper spacing in these engagements and doesn't feel as pressured. Dyer's top tower. See if he can pump up that DPS a little bit. And uh, for Team Spirit, though, uh, the goal right now, you, I'm sure you're thinking about Roche. Not, not necessarily now, but you're, you're planning towards that in the future, right? Mm -hmm. You have an Ursa on your lineup. Going for the battle fury. Down to about half HP, the sidekick. There for the turn with this bow. Toronto Kid makes the rotation with the arcane rune, and they punish one of those top net worth heroes taking down DM. And uh, right back to the mid lane, too. And if you can only get Toronto Tokyo here, unfortunately, he has to run into the Mojka. The X is there. Yeah, I mean, he still has a, uh, a grave, so. Okay, snowball so used. Fast. Mojka pops the grave and just walks away, not opting to use it all. The top side, Hakoda top also caught attack. on Dyer's this Skywrath Mage. So Toronto Tokyo, they managed to find two kills with that rotation. Yeah, Mapochka still surviving. I mean, GPK, I feel like he, he doesn't want to beat. Like, top. he doesn't want to overcommit. And so he's not getting that full on pressure onto these heroes. Like, not onto Mapochka in the mid, Dyer's not onto Claps in the bottom. Is under attack. And uh, they, you know, they kind of need these plays right now. I mean, it is, to... it's very scary with the potential for a Viper rotation. You know, if you're underneath that tower, you're not getting out as Kunkka, but it, it, it's like you said, they need it. Well, they're gonna smoke up. They're gonna start making their way up top here. Yadro still vulnerable as he sits on the lane. They've got four heroes up no. here. Mira trying to block the smoke from connecting onto the Ursa, but they might just get both of them depending. Actually, Outsiders, they they're, they're at double back. There is a, a TP Radiant's as well here from Toronto Tokyo too. So if they do dive up there, he TPs in. It could go bad. They want the room. I think that's part of it here as well. Koda, silence. GPK finds an X. Snowball tries to get away. Stun is out onto both. Got a sidekick. Mira just gets away. Dispose out. A couple more punches is all they need. And doesn't quite find Mira, but they do eventually. And they bring all three heroes. Yeah. Still, they have to commit that way at the very least, so Yadro can't be chased down after. Radiant structures. Are and they fortified. immediately just keep chasing. <laughs> all right, they run back top again, <laughs> and they find him. Yadro thought he was safe. No longer the case. There is a TP coming in from the Viper, and they might have scouted that, so they give up for a moment. Uh -huh. And now they run back in after the TP has been canceled. They go in for the kill anyway. Oh, that feels real bad. Yadro's like, come on, you gotta come to me. Oh, yeah, a lot of these other times where he's turned it around, he's had the sidekick, you know, so he can, like, chew his way back into it. The possessed mask not really having the same effect no. here. So, yeah, unfortunate there. I don't know if Claps got canceled by someone else or just didn't see the value Radiant's of the rotation. Because, obviously, attack. if he makes the TV, they probably don't go again, and then, you know, Claps isn't farming. So, yeah, he's still benefiting a lot by being out here. He now gets the Fairy's Trinket, a fantastic item. Dyer's top pretty top much anyone, probably Toronto attack. Tokyo. We're going to grab that one up there, but we'll see. Well, I will say that from what you've seen from Spirit throughout the DPC, throughout a lot of their matches, they sometimes will drop down a little bit early like this and then make a rotation in the mid game. We'll see if they can make it happen again in this one, but Radiant Outsiders kind of running attack. ragged over them over these last mm. few minutes. 
Yeah, Mira does go down there. It was trying to get the, the Fairy Stringer. Does not often get that much support these days, but uh, we have been seeing this trend actually a little bit more where the, the core players are Dyer's taking the arcade ring. Because, you know, more mana is more farm a lot of the time. They figured that one out. It took them a while, Radiant's but they got there, you know? Attack. But the spell is so nice. Ah, you you maybe just get later. Outsiders looking to keep the pressure on. Tier 1 tower in towards mid. Boshka is there and the finish. Now runs in. Only Horus appearance to his name, but Toronto can't hear anything. Might be able to make it up to the finish. Jumps forward, catching, but no, they have to run away. Yagaro is in rage, turns to fight, realizes he can't. Damage. Slowly whittled down by collapse, does die. Don't forget the bite. Yeah, the end. It's support for support. Yeah, team got pretty low there too, but uh, so we, we talked a little bit about how like GB game like wasn't committing, like wasn't diving stuff, but you can see that he's super high right now in terms of the net worth. And the reason for that is because he's not taking these risks. I'm sure he just really doesn't want it unless it's super safe because he can go back and he's still farm really quick. And he's taking a part of the map that Ramsey wasn't able to reach anyway. And so GBK is just really getting close to that BKB at an excellent time right now. Moves forward and they find him. Just like that, the Caster oh, Curse is going to strike again. Radiance <laughs> Radiant eyes immediately. Um, Radiant perhaps not expecting that many heroes to stick around. It's it would a seem. Possibility. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, once Yamich dies, there, there's less threat of turnaround potential with the snowball, so a little bit less fear there from Team Spirit as they hop right on in. Well played, well played. I mean, part of that too is you saw Toronto Tokyo. He had X uh, spotted the X mark and was able to sneak around there with the smoke. But. Team Spirit, after losing a bit of footing, have found it again and are pressuring this mid tower. And it looks like they will get it. And if Flash finishes up the boots of travel, Radiant's which he does indeed, yeah, he's purchased that recipe. So yeah, this is going to be a lot of global pressure right now from a Viper who's at probably the scariest Dyer's part of the game, it feels like this hero. You know, you, you build him that like next item, be it, he's looking at a Hurricane Pike maybe, perhaps even a Scott. He's going to have all kinds of stuff. Doesn't seem to feel the need for a BKB quite yet. Uh, this, this is a true powerful moment right now for this Viper player. Can he connect with it, though, and find the good fights? See so Yamich TP out of bottom, and Yadro almost done with the Battle Fury. 14 minutes. Smoke here. Nice Aether Remnant, though, to catch the stairs. They're going to find their way through this bottom half of the map, see if they can catch Yadro. And Maposhka looking to do his duty here. He knows. Yeah, he knows. He knows so hard. He's just waiting there. They think that there's a ward even up yeah, in the high ground. Yeah, by like how he stood, it really did look like it. Reading the map very well on Team Spirit. And they even checked yeah, I the mean, sentry ward. I, I, I mean, would too. That's crazy. If, if Maposhka tips him right now, then we gotta do some investigating. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Battle Fury done, and Yadro immediately over to this triple stack of Ancient, clears through it. That was actually ridiculous. I can't believe he just waited a smoke just with, without even having the knowledge of it. Yeah, really well Radiant done. Oscar. This is really all you have to do is five guys. And like, it's, look, the cores are warding these days. They're taking these things. They're free. They're a little more open to the idea. I mean, to be fair, just keep them alive. There's a lot of TI winners on his team too. I don't know if, if the fives in the other games are gonna be able to replicate that as well. <laughs> Cores in your game walk up that ramp. <laughs> Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. But you can see this trifectas of cores. There's very little separating all of them. Uh, it's less than a thousand gold. If a uh, big fight breaks out right here, it's gonna come down a lot to the timings and what all the stuff. Uh, is completed at that point, and Kunka mm -hmm. building towards the BKB almost has it done for GPK with the Manta done on Terra Blade. This might give him enough confidence to make at least a defense oh, there's a Roche attempt. Yeah, and so the interesting thing about an Ursa draft, like we talk about how there was this sort of early game timing that was possible for Team Spirit. They didn't necessarily hit that. Uh, I would not say that they like pressured enough objectives and grew this to something that's very uh, threatening before Terra Blade becomes a real hero. And so now we've got this other idea of the Ursa. He, he's got the Battle Fury, and Ursa is a hero that no matter what happens in the game pretty much, if you stun someone and control them, Ursa can't kill them. So that's always going to be an avenue back into it, but this window for them to really be dominant, especially this fight, they shrink right now. Oh, the stun, they find and kill collapse. Only the boots travel, not enough. Toronto jumps in, tries to bring down a code of Mira, living through with the sidekick in the unleash. The image is going to die, so Team Spirit punish that aggression. Although again, it's the two supports for the core. Yeah, there's no smokes. I'm really expecting them to just like turn this into a roast at some point. I don't know which kill it's gonna be, but I feel like that's the, the sort of moment Team Spirit needs right now. They just need like kill into Roche and to go. 
Uh, but Mushkin is closing in on the shard as well, which is great. I'm certain that uh, that's probably what he's saving up for here. They really need this move, and now they get the catch. Absolutely yeah, massive on top here. They need the disable's been used for Yaros here, unfortunately. That, I, they might just die on this if you go for the winner. Everybody from Spirit tried to chase DM. Get that guy. And they can't get him. He's just away. Okay, all right. Yeah, maybe a little bit uh, better in thought than execution, but to it be happens. fair though, that's gonna be a lot different now. Mira does now have the blink dagger here, okay. so the raw blink on Mercy. It's uh, one of the best things about this hero is like sometimes the aether build is still fine, sure. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot of games where you you find yourself chasing a situation like this and you're just like, "Bye, did I just need blink?" Yeah. Like brown boots blink. It, it's so incredible on this hero. It's just such a free initiation. They're not worth it. So uh, maybe find themselves into a smoke and to find a kill, go to Roche. And how does the fight look good for them, though? Like, what is the, the best initial jump? Probably, like, hop in, Aether pull on one target, and perhaps even Yulesing up another one so there's less turnaround potential. Maybe Yulesing uh, up that uh, Skywrath Mage or Tusk. I mean, if they can find the Sky, that's always such a nice mm -hmm. uh, answer. But, but likewise, it's BKB time for GPK. Yeah. And damage. There's the Aether. Throws a little bit off the mark. GPK takes that one. Oh, Oshka dead. As everybody was there from Outsiders and with Ramsey showing up, this is going to be a tower. Another kill. I like that for Roche now. There's a DD. I think they got Roche with meta, right? Take this away from the Ursa lineup. Oh, this is huge. Yeah, get in there. What go, a big go, 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 go. I mean, do they think about coming on in this game? It's not even like a tie. They don't think it's so dangerous. No, there's not even the, the shard on the Dazzle right now, which would be amazing in this sort of scenario, but they're not going to have it. So, again, this window just. It, it kind of gets slammed shut, right? I mean, yeah. It's not over, but just so much of what we're looking for to take away from the outsiders right now. And you talked about that, that like initial jump, right? They kind of did two separate things. Mira went in with the dispose, yeah. then you had the remnant, which was just thrown down right away, and then it ended up missing. So, a little bit of miscommunication between Spirit and outsiders, the beneficiaries. It's also a very difficult spot to fight on the map versus Tusk and Kunkka. It's like enclosed spaces and they can sort of uh, cut off a lot of the exits right there between the trees and the ramp. And so then mm. the boat coming down was difficult to escape from a lot of that. And now a, uh, a Brigand's Blade found, I believe, from outside. I guess he's uh, he's more happy with the broom handle. Fair enough. Dyer's and uh, soon into the, uh, the Chrysalis here. So big damage to GPK. I mean, as much as that looked terrible, and that you don't have the, awesome. the Aegis on the Ursa, I still kind of feel like Team Spirit's lineup has some stuff in it. Dyer's if things go right for them, but attack. these types of smokes when they miss, it always hurts so bad. It's not because Yara was in that moment where he really, really wants the BKB, and this is a game where it's so hard to ignore it. Uh, maybe you can get away with it if you had to get the Aegis or something, then go for the Basher, so his own control is very limited. It means he's going to be relying on this Splink Dispose, and again, I do think that Dazzle Shard is still pretty huge. At least he has the Philosopher's Stone to get in towards it, so that'll help continue their Chain Stun from Boboshka, and getting a Collapse damage in is kind of similar to getting Yadro able to right-click, right? Like, yeah, you can sort of slow them down a step, but there's a lot of these tools at this point in the game where you don't just get to like freely right-click someone. And this moment right here too, Outsiders spotted that ward and Toronto Tokyo, a little bit of trouble, has the Yule Scepter used, can they bring up the has its own now, let's try and survive through this. Second round, jumps away, right there, making the fight, GPK gets jumped on, Yadro blows him up. TM trying to walk away from this one, will Timber Chain out? As Team Spirit have the potential to chase this, yeah. they see everybody as Ramsey's walks forward, stunned up. Where's the follow-up? Do they have enough? Mira is absolutely obliterated. Gauro gets taken down low, TP's out, but the Yules is there. So no chance to escape as Team Spirit lose three. And they saw Ramsey's walk in, they had that ward down. I'm thinking they probably shouldn't have chased. I'm just, you know, in Captain Hindsight here, yeah. It looks like that might not have worked out too well because Ramsey's just went for the old turn and burn and it's tempting to go because you see the rum buff wearing out, right? Oh yeah. It's like, oh yeah, Conk is dead, like let's go here and unable to turn it here. But considering the situation too, just it started out fairly well, right? You get this nice grave save here after his own defensive yules. I think that might have been a miscommunication maybe where Hakoda didn't know that it was a of their right. own yules first. Yeah. And so he tried to throw that down instead. And then the run buff, it's ending, and that's what I think propels them into this chase. It's like, oh we've blink, we've rebound, we want to fight into them right now. But yeah, Ramsey's just he just shows up. And once they were up on that high ground, there just wasn't an opportunity. <laughs> Image making control happen. And like, Dyer's when Toronto Tokyo dies, the fight's over. It's mine. 
Yeah, not much else to do after that, especially when the dispose happens and you can't even focus the timber, right? True. That's sort of your one moment to get it down, and if you don't, he's just chaining, he's out of there, and you're in a lot of trouble. So Outsiders, 6k gold up right now. 15 to 10. And the next Dyer's couple of minutes here, Aegis, still a little bit of time remaining. We'll see if they attempt to make the uh, push happen on that top side of the map, take down that tier 2 tower, mm -hmm. open up the outpost, but... And uh, that's one thing that isn't necessarily perfect for their lineup at this point, right? Right now they're relying on the uh, the Blink Tusk or just like reaching with an X. So now having that Shadow Blade gives them another avenue to open up these engagements in a positive way. And they currently have a great ward as well, directly in between two sentries in the mid. That's actually such a brutal ward. It is barely being ignored by these sentries. So mm. catching a lot of these uh, cross map movements right now from Spirit. Could, uh, could result in GPK running into some trouble though, considering how many sentries are around it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> if he actually went that way, but... Well, you've talked a lot about this. The Dazzle Shard is done now, and they are still controlling that top side of the map. All Terrible Illusions will die to it. Uh, not the real hero, unfortunately. Yeah, two second tax doesn't sound like a long time until an Ursa is hitting you. And yeah, like, wow, this is long and it stuns. Everything dropped. Collapse has just been food over the last seven minutes of damage. Uh, all right, all right. I don't know how he feels about it. Tier 2 tower done there. Testing tower out. In his defense, he did not pleasure. That's fair. <laughs> Go pull back in. You will Scepter to try and survive. And keep some out of harm's way for the moment with Metamorphosis still going. 20 seconds on this Aegis and we're hitting high ground. Huh? It's pretty bold. Hex, Ramses continues to punch away at it. Has the Scotty Kilk's confident. I don't know if, I mean, they're not back on the Ursa, so they're going to take this tier 3 tower, Dyer's no fight, tower no open. answer, no nothing. I mean, there's no BKB on Ursa, it's very hard for them to get into these engagements right now. Jumps on in. Oh, and right. With the Aegis expiring, they, oh, do they get the ranged? Just barely. Not going to go down. 26 HE, although there's two illusions coming in. Let's see if he goes on into micro that. It's okay, they'll get hexed. Nice. Look at that, 70 gold. Scanning. This shard pays for itself, man. I mean, I deny that, Rax. I don't care. <laughs> that is why you're up here. <laughs> exactly. And not down there. <laughs> Please don't deny your Rax, guys. <laughs> Please. 16 to 10. Do you want super creeps? Because that's how you get super creeps. That's true. That's a fair point. GPK has looked Step pretty line. good for the followers oh, here. On board. God, they need BKB so bad on Spirit. Is that going to be the next one? Well, the problem is they, well? they can't even afford to get them on some of these heroes. Like, it feels so bad, you know? I mean, it's true. Like, Toronto, Tokyo, you think this guy's buying a BKB? I don't think so. Yeah, he's so then Yadro's finally going to get one. And uh, actually, they're really surprisingly close to collapse. That's good. He didn't even have to go for the disassemble play. Yeah, there you go. Gets the full one done. I mean, it does feel bad when you're Viper, especially. You know? True. <laughs> like, Bounty. some heroes, it doesn't feel quite as bad, but... He's that range. Okay, so uh, a new breath of life here for Team Spirit. The Aegis is down. They don't have to worry about a second life. They have BKBs. They have that great blink initiation there from the Mercy. Perhaps they can find themselves a good play, but Yamich, he is on the prowl. Look at this guy. He's sitting up on the pillar, yeah. shadow emulated. I mean, this tells you everything about outsiders right now. Like, Roche isn't even capable of responding for another, like, minute and a half, but they know this is the key to victory. They're going to hang on to this side of the map, not give up that outpost, not give up anything. And for Spirit, they've got to find a way to pull them elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Maybe get some vision down at some point. They need a late spawn. If they get a really late spawn on Roche, not that they'll, of course, know, so it's still very hard to play around these objectives in that sense. They need the timing to try and get this Aghanim Scepter done on Void Spirit, as well as the Basher done on Ursa. Well, that is the plan at the very least. And it's going to take them a little while to make that happen. But for now... Keeping these lanes pushed out and not losing any heroes in any random smoke rotations. Because that's the other thing. We've seen a couple of different times now where outsiders have been able to find these pickoffs in moments where you not otherwise would have been able to. DM no. just walks in and they have no punish for that at all. Yeah, you gotta be careful with him because the silver as well. That break breaks the bows, brings them down low. GPK! He didn't stand a chance on no, ice. They got what they needed. Now he's X to pull back in DM. He misses his chain. Everything is falling apart for outsiders in the last couple minutes. Yeah, 
draws some kill, throws out the remnant, gets the kill, assimilates away, and Ramses also escapes. So we said an early spawn would be bad. Now it's really good if it's an immediate spawn. <laughs> 45 seconds. Yeah, at least they'll be back up on the side of Outsiders though, so it shouldn't be too free, unless they're like literally sitting in the pit waiting for it to spawn, but Team Spirit, that, that's all it takes with the bear. One yeah. one person out of position, GPK, the backbone of this team, throughout a lot of these engagements, getting that run buff down, helping out all the allies, and he was gone. The, the re He was dead so fast, the replay doesn't have him in it. That's unreal. <laughs> and I mean, again, normally good to extra teammates pull him back afterwards, but because he just got so locked down, it ended up being terrible. And, oof. 6,000 gold lead gone very quickly as Team Spirit have found a way to pull themselves back into this game. Yeah, it's all just about enabling that bear, getting that BKB up, and striking uh, at the perfect moment here from Team Spirit, and that is exactly what they did. We now go back for the tier three neutrals. Round those up, but those big items, they're coming through. Bash will be done in just a moment. Agonim's already done. This is, this is Danger Town, though, because again, Team Spirit, you really don't want to give up this Roche if you can avoid it, and for Outsiders, you kind of have to commit a meta, I think, to take it quickly. Things get a little bit terrifying otherwise. The question is, how fast do they react when they suddenly get silenced by Void Spirit, right? Oh, good scan. Because, like, Hakoda has nothing. Yeah. So he can just go down. That, that's a huge aspect. And same thing with Yamish, because Yamish is this big link save with the Snowball. So targeting these two supports, they look pretty free for Toronto Tokyo in these engagements right now. Double ward place down there by Mopo a misclick, and I don't know if they have another one actually to drop on the high ground. Unfortunately, it's an invis. Surprisingly, they got that right here. Jumps in, DM, it's a BKB. That's a good bait. If Toronto Tokyo gets out, they're fine with this. Outsiders use a BKB right before a pivotal Roche fight. They smoke instantly again. Yeah. Has been killed. They know how important this fight is. They they are they are dodging away. They do not want to get caught out of position here. Yeah, DM gonna grab the outpost. Excellent, just in Dyer's case they need a buyback moment here. And up top, they actually are, are gonna lose Dyer's that rack. Oh, but here we go. Yara's gonna oh, hold in. So heavy top. So this Roche is going the way of Team Spirit. Dyer's top they move on into attack. the pit, gonna claim this one. And outsiders, uh, I don't know if they're gonna get back in time. Tries to bring it down. Oh, the shards, it's spot. Some sad news Dyer's for outsiders as they lose attack. the roach and they don't even Dyer's get the top melee racks. No, they, they don't even commit to it with the creep wave being there just in case the rotation. So, outsiders getting a bit caught up here. I mean, this is what we talked about. This is what has happened in so many Team Spirit games. They come out a little bit behind to worse in the mid game and then late game. Some of these decision making choices have just really worked out for them well, and it's I mean, obviously, still anybody's game with the less than 2,000 gold separating the two teams, but a big win there for Spirit. Yeah, part of it is that Outsiders have a very formulaic way they want to take these engagements, and when someone like GBK just gets blown up, that's why it just completely fell apart. You know, like, he, he has to be at the front, or there's just no way for Ramses to really play. Yamich is looking for them to spend spells so that he can make saves, or he just wants that first, like, blink burst of initiation, and he was just so isolated on GPK and blown up so fast by that Ursa that it, it sort of crumbled, whereas uh, that's something that Team Spirit have just kind of everywhere, right? This, like, blink turbos back, even just the hex from the Dazzle. If you, if you just make one tiny mistake, you, you're going to get annihilated between this Ursa and Void Spirit. Now, there is also that danger of, as this game goes later, the, the strength of Terrorblade, uh, and Ramsey's definitely is set up to become a monster. Top net worth in the game Old right now. And, sweet. and going next into Daedalus after mm -hmm. having already the BKB done. Yeah, and if they can keep those bodies in front of the Timbers on the Kunker, you're going to try and give the spacing for Ramsey's because he's already well, you know, past the spot the next level of itemization coming out here. True. And uh, Yadro is always going to be strong with that for the entire game. Well, a bottled up DD. Basher in the backpack. Smoke time. See what Team Spirit can manage to do with this. They need to push out that top lane. The frustration of having that, main, or rather, range racks dead mm -hmm. is it's going to keep the pressure out. I think they spent all their smokes as well in that rush. I think, oh, really? I think, I think like global <laughs> smokes are just down right now. We okay. got one on a Hakoda by the looks of it, but premium. Obviously, not looking to it to make too many aggressive moves right now into that Aegis. 
Silver Edge done for the Kunkka. You can see Dion going in for the Shiva, as you can see. Also, Outsiders' slight favorites mm -hmm. right now. I'm assuming that's just because of that late game scaling that we've talked about. Late game scaling, and I think also just the difficulty is this BKB such a rare to plank versus the Kunkka, right? It's, uh, when the Kunkka just needs to hold you and he has an, uh, an extra damage source, when that's not his reliability in a team fight, that's when Kunkka shines to me. Is that he just has to like get the water park going, you know? Head on over to old Six Flags. But Tron Tokyo was sort of waiting, right? Because I, I thought maybe on the revive he was going to go in and try and get a big silence to, to counter out the, the Tusk and the, the Skyrath Mage. But instead, he waited until Ursa respawns Dyer's instantly BKBs. And so Thunder he tries to come in after as the BKBs ending, and he was just so ready on Hakoda. Got the instant Ancient Seal on him. Dyer's that is the danger, of course. Of, and and this was all a, after. Yeah, all chasing a timber, by the way. Because you have the DD, you understand, but that's what you have just waiting for, right? Tower. This is what happens when you don't get blown Dyer's up right away, and you have a chance to start Dyer's to play, and suddenly tower. this whole it's idea of Team Street being able to win fights just goes out the window. So you can see I'm top there, he's just waiting, and it's fine. We're back in the game. Perfect. Uh, got some more action that's going to come around the corner. I mean, that's the thing, right? Is that he needs to come up with an answer for that. Um, and likewise, going on the timber, if you get him down, kill him it's always great but Dyer's we can see what happens tower. when it doesn't work out that way agonim's done tower. for the kunkka now attack. so as you mentioned torrent storm ready to go and that is so hard to play into once those bkbs are much lower has the torn aoe talent at 22. i know a lot about these splash pads now because mm. you know got the kids everyone's it's really hot out everyone's I there see. and let me just tell you that there is nothing but sheer panic at a splash pad okay all right from from age zero to age 99. You're you never know that water's coming out yeah, it's, it's terrifying yes. that's that's all this is it's just a big splash pad for kunkka it's emotional damage it's dangerous. And it's also really difficult to navigate as your BKB start to wear out. And that's what's happening, right? We've got seven seconds left on Yandro. It's something that uh, a Dazzle, you know, we always talk about like Ravage a lot of time versus right. Dazzle. There's this big AoE, and so even if you're trying to wait in behind to save some target, when the Ravage comes out, you get Ravage too, because it's so big. So imagine you're trying to navigate these fights as poor little Maposhka here. Got nothing. Just mm. a shard. Uh, he might have to buy a Blink this game, just to try and hang way back for a, a Blink grave. Something. I mean, it's it's tough, like, when the fights become that chaotic and also you can get blown up, but a smoke now and Outsiders, they don't have vision, but Toronto Tokyo, he is under reward, so Team Spirit would have perfect vision of all of this. They see it now, and uh, that tells the uh, Outsiders that they don't want to fight there. Yeah, I this one popping on GPK, though, as he was invis, too, as he runs around with his gem. Now, that was well done, though. And Team Spirit realizing that there could have been something coming their way. They're going to hold their high ground. Could I interest you in a third row? Exactly. Yeah. That's what it feels like. God, sidekick is so good. Get a ton of damage out of that. Oh, when you're given the freedom to right-click people, it can be very good. But in this game, some difficulties there. True. Now a Daedalus done for the Terror Blade. We have our Timber Saw working on the Wind Waker, which is a great item to help save anyone in those precarious situations when they're trying to get the uh, initial blow up. Plus, uh, already has the Shiva's Guard, too. So, just uh, continuing to kite this Ursa around these engagements. Bissell Blade is going to come out next. Might need to get in towards a Nullifier or something at some point. Uh, because, like you said, there's all those defensive options uh, on the side of Outsiders. And Yadaro also going in for the E-Blade. Radiant. So, he wants to be able to get more solo pickoff potential for himself. Toronto. Toronto, that's yeah, the one. Not, not a Yadaro. Not a Yadaro. That sounds hype, though. Dude, bear e blade. That sounds. Oh. That's like the worst anti synergy <laughs> I've ever heard. <laughs> All right, well, that's how it goes sometimes. Vasquez is gonna get the D ward there too. And they're very much bullying them around the map right now. Outsiders everywhere that they go. <laughs> Team Spirit awesome. has to back out of there. Tier two tower is dead across the board. But on the side of Outsiders, they still have uh, both their tier twos bottom and mid, as well as a tier one up top. 
And the question is for a team spirit, how can you enable your pickoff style trap? How can you actually separate outsiders right now where you can find this moment to get this dispose into the, uh, the Ursa blow up that you had before? And uh, unfortunately, I don't know if there's a really good answer for that. I, I feel like they don't have the creep wave pressure, right? They don't have either support that can do that. They have a Dazzle and a uh, Marcy, so there's nothing weird that they can be doing. Uh, to try and like force Kiro back just for that brief second. Even they have bots, right? Like that's the kind of widow you just need for an Ursa kill someone, but there's really nothing pressuring outsiders to split up right now. No, they can stay together on the map. GPK can play X marks games. Uh, yeah, yeah. Keep those lanes shut. He can X marks. They've got Conjure Image. Like, there's just no way you can match the lane pressure that they have. And so, as the clock ticks on, you would think that it's going to continue to grow more and more in the outsiders' favor uh, until Team Spirit can sort of snipe that tiny little window of annihilating someone. Well, there will be another window that opens up here as 43 seconds till Roche respawns, but also the next tier four uh, neutral items about to spawn. And maybe you find a couple of answers in there, but it is looking tough to uh, play the map right now on Team Spirit for outsiders just waiting for that Roche to respawn. Ninja gear. It's pretty decent there for the Ursa. Yeah, I feel like that's what they want on uh, outsiders. Oh, they definitely want leveler too. MKB done. Quality Ursa item. It's, uh, you know, versus these agi heroes, that is one of the benefits of Ursa in a lot of ways, is that they, they have a hard time going for butterflies because you're usually going to offer that anyway, but Ramses wasn't heading that direction. Let's give himself a, a satanic next. Starts buying out, selling. Doesn't quite hit it. His math was a little bit off, but there you go. Reaver's done now, so. The rest of it flying another courier. So now Satanic, Manta, BKB, everything here ready for this fight. They head into the pit. And they also have a ward on that high ground. Team Spirit, do they know about this? Toronto Tokyo checking, gets the team ward, dissimulate on down to the low ground, gets the silence on the boat, Mira catches. kills there three buybacks across the side of team spirit only the two supports having to buy back on the side of outsiders but you will take that in the current game state that they had and the fact that you're not going to have to uh, contest with this age is terribly Dyer's approaching your high ground yeah that makes a attack. huge difference but we're i mean the, look at how dangerous this scotty is and of course a good play by team spirit have the vision there pull him back into it should they have chased up this high ground in in high <sighs> half in hindsight I mean, for, for outsiders, it feels a little rough to lose that Aegis, for sure. And as well as the Refresher Shard, too, right? They also spent that, and on all he got out of it was the uh, the two kills on the supports. True. Oh, actually, no, he got the kill there, too, as well. Toronto Tokyo. So you'll take that, right? Force a buyback on Toronto Tokyo with Refresher yeah. Shard. So, benefits, it, it keeps this game right. fairly even. They're not as forced back in their own base. They're not going to be pressured on the map as hard by outsiders. Had they just, like, not won this fight or not been engaged by outsiders. But the downside is now that there are some pretty significant win conditions here for the side of outsiders. If they manage to take down someone like Toronto Tokyo, it's, it's going to be very difficult for them to hold that high ground. Already having the tower down means one win and creeps in the base. You could potentially end the game Radiant's off the back of Terrible being attack. alive. So 40 minute mark comes around and well, the rest of Team Spirit gonna TP out after pressuring bottom. It's like the most they've gotten on the map in so yeah. long. They, they can't even get the tier two. I mean, it's rough. Hard to fight into this team that Outsiders has assembled. Yeah, and this is just, a, it's classic just like lane shove issues. They just don't have the capacity to deal with this right now with these heroes. 
Yeah, there's one other thing is the levels definitely get a big swing back into the favor of uh, Team Spirit there. It's 25, yeah. but uh, the only one to have it so far. Yeah, the, the one thing about running around is group, of course, and with Illusion here, so they don't gain the levels as fast because the, it's a lot of the, uh, the images just clearing these side waves. And so when you're all running around as five, even if you're growing more of a net worth lead, you might not get the same XP lead that you can get when you're dominating as hard. Right. That and so and then when you win these combat fights, that's when all that XP just like suddenly pours back into True. Team Spirit's side. <laughs> more items up and mentioned that there was actually another 25 there for the Kunkka, so he has the ghost ship fleet. These fights feel like an impossibility without having BKBs ready to go. See what they can do with it, though. As Collapse heads on out towards mid, Penta Edge Sword, that's a nice one. And they do have another gem now uh, on the Pochka, so I believe they lost one at some point, but that's there. So, gem to help out. We're gonna have a, a unassembled Aeon disc as well here on Toronto Tokyo. So, okay. prepped to make a big play. Smoke on smoke. Where are they gonna find each other? The smoke on the illusion that breaks, so it tells them that they're in the area. Oh, that is big. And now, get the vision down. Jumps away afterwards. Team Spirit already in on the fight. The silence is there. You will suffer afterwards. GPK. He pulls the push back in. Snowball collapse, TP's out, does he have a way to escape? He does. Good read there, seeing the wall too much used to kill Mira. At least finds a way to survive, but... Uh, that's not, they're just playing it really safe by targeting the supports down right away. Dyer's you know, you don't want these, uh, these safe plays coming up between like the rebound Dyer's and the dispos, getting tossed back in the shallow grave, somehow they turn it around. Visibility. You already know what your win condition is, so get those uh, those supports out of the way. That's gonna be to reach out to Toronto. Yeah, that was a Dyer's gem hunt right there. Listen, when your heroes die, you still got no, Toronto. I'm trying to make a desperation play here. He came me immediately. And out. Can they find any more? Collapse has to back away. He's in trouble though. TM right on top of him. Yano actually jumps in. Maybe a chance for a turn. Hits the Sunder, but then abandoned once more. This time with no Sunder available, cool. as he's so close to 25, by the way. Had he gone for that, that would be kind of hype in the middle of that fight. And back it on the map, uh, Yadro is, is feeling a bit, uh, a bit peckish, it would seem. Yeah, he needs to get something. That is one of those fights that you... I mean, if you get this kill onto Ramses, it, it changes everything to the fact that you don't. Cost the buyback app. Yeah, like, that's what really hurts. It, it was such an excellent way. I mean, it's truly the only play that Toronto Tokyo has, right? He's like going that back line with the Invis rune that he got out of the river. Yeah. Try and interrupt this siege as his allies are dead. What could have been? And after that buyback, GPK and DM just say, we don't want any part of this. Know that at least somebody is going to be dead. Double damage! But. 11,000 gold lead. It's been sitting around this area for a little while now, and every time it looks like Team Spirit Radiant are going to take a positive move, they but set back a couple spaces. They have to do something crazy here. Oh, there's a scan into a pause. Mmm. Well, chivalry between them. All right. We'll see who comes out on top of this one because we're back into the game now. Yeah, toss over, back on, headphones back on. Yeah, Radiant's jump that base. Come tower. on. I thought he was going to go break for our Tower is under yeah, they're not going for it right now, so back into the jungle, thought to be risky play, pauses tend to uh, lose your mojo, you don't have as good sense on everything, so play it safe, head on back. And now with the Reapers on your outsiders, they look like they're just ready to just run at him again. There's a chance. That DD's wearing off. And almost level 25 on Ramses, you talked about that earlier. But look what he does, he smokes himself in the fountain, yeah. and then he TPs in, and he sees that he's still smoked under the tier two, and so he just conjures the images and keeps running through. So he knows they're not waiting there to gank him, right? Because his teammates were also sort of close, so they could have been running in that direction. And there's oh, been a couple oh cool God. little plays there with the smoke illusions. That one that we saw mid where he... The ninja gears are so crafty, you know, you can do so much, so much cool. fun stuff. I mean, we've also been seeing Yadro do the same thing, right, when he was ninja gearing around sure. as well. Hex done, swift blink for Yadro. 
the hex will be big and that blink dagger that you talked about for dazzle he has gone for it yeah so aether blink he's man he's so late on his purchases too he's just he's always making sure he's got that buyback i guess but i mean he's actually still i guess he's still taking into it at this point but mm -hmm. he's been holding a lot of cash this game i've noticed from a post guy it's true you know he like farmed over his shard he farmed over his blink right but has determined that this is the time Aghanim scepter done for viper and set up for the next Roche fight. We'll see how long the respawn is. And just a couple of seconds here. And it's going to be a very short one. Wow, three spawns under a minute in this game. Buyback status, Tusk, Timber, Terrorblade. Illusion. See if the, uh, the Agnums can, can get yeah, done there. The attacks will finish quickly here. As well, Ooh, that's a quick one. Quick old Roche, huh? Yeah. Uh, oh, how, about, how about another X? I know, why not? Well, I was saying that the, there's also the, the respawns now. Uh, the buybacks are going to be ready for a couple other heroes. Gotcha, yeah. As we hit our, our fourth row. So everything's there. Come and collect your prize, if you dare. It's dangerous. Toronto Tokyo is going to have to show down bottom. It's tough because the story hasn't changed much for Spirit. Oh, they're not going to realize this. They're, they're still in lane problems, and the, the way they set fights is still very difficult. Oh, and there's no way for them to check into the pit, and this is such a quick roach, they would not have anticipated this. I mean, how do you even fight this? I mean, it's, it's an impossibility, but the Outsiders, they're going to get it. They temper chain in, and Roche goes the way of Outsiders. I, I love just that little bit of play there, too, to stop any blinks or anything, right? Yeah. Like the Shiva's got up on the high ground there. Aghanim Scepter, it is passed over to DM. Yep, great choice. This is such oh, dropped up. Damage. First damage. Taking some stuns. I but don't have that right away. Yeah, he still isn't by Swords and Dispel as well. So he still is being targeted quite heavily by Toronto Tokyo. Yeah. Only that uh, disassemble or the assemble play available to him. Oh, no, I mean on damage. Oh, for damage, yeah. yeah. Seems like jump on. But uh, he's also a very tanky guy, you know. He's got himself the Glimmer Cape, too. He can help lift through that. So this is double Hex now, both for the Timber and then also on the, the Kunkka. And then the other issue is the Refresher Shard. I mean, this is going to get very scary for Team Spirit if they decide to push here, and I, I feel like they're coming. Yamaro's BKB wins this game. That's, like, their only hope right now, right? Like, he has to get so much done during that BKB, or it's going to be very hard for him to fight. Or if he gets a quick kill without the BKB using the Swift Blink, that could also be huge. They need a weird bait right now. You know, this, they're positioned over here. They're not even in their base. They're trying to find something Radiant a little bit funky. Scanning. And outsiders, they're not going to give it to them. They just walk Dyer's on forward. Going to do some X plays there. Ramses takes down in that tier three tower. Illusion's dead, but the rest of Team Spirit a little bit slow to show up. And look at this, Omira. They see him underneath the ward. Now he's going to TP back. All right. Man, they were TPing so close to the base too. Yeah. Dyer are scanning. 18k. That Roche going the way of Outsiders really hurts Spirit. Is that a Scotty Dunn also on the Viper? DM walks up high ground. They spot that there's no vision nearby. But Yamich in pretty far forward with the Glimmer attack. Cape. He gets down a ward, but Yadro finds him. Snowball. Toronto Tokyo tries to get the lift over to the side. He pulls it back Fight in. And, well, Outsiders are going to leave their tusk for dead. Yeah, that was a pretty greedy maneuver to make. I mean, they have two gems now. Back towards the That war is really dead. They lose the range racks. But getting the kill on the tusk, not bad. No, they desperately need that kind of a play. They, they need that kill on the tusk because it makes the initiation a lot safer for Yadro to go in. And again, the pressure is there now. Team Spirit to go and make a move. You don't want to just like hold back after getting this kill. So hard though, like you say. They're smoked up. DM, they walk forward, Hex is there. Alias and Wolf stun, follow up. Do they have enough to break down DM? He's dead. Yeah, no get out. I mean, that's, that's the pressure, but there's no snowball. Like, sure, you can buy back and force it out of damage, but they get an excellent target. There's no save available. 
and now you're you're off foot, right? You're you're kind of a little bit tilted, one could yeah. say, uh, <laughs> on the side of the Outsiders, because you're missing one of your heroes, and so you don't want to progress on the map without your timber saw, and you just want to buy back for nothing. And so now you've just stalled out a minute and a half here, and well, you know what? That Aegis, not gonna be a lot of time left there by the time he gets back. That's true. And the BKB, the sort of small price that you pay on the Ursa for being used, but it's not enough to make Outsiders feel comfortable going up and pushing for high ground. And he understands the the necessity of this BKB as well. That's why it's going True. for the refresher, sh or the refresher orb, sorry, next on Yadro as well. Just, you have to have it. You can find any moment to make that work and get one of those key pickoffs. Uh, it's going to be a constant danger throughout the rest of this game. Well, do you think we will be reaching the tier five neutral items? I mean, I don't know. Because I, I heard, I heard some some jibber jabber. Oh yeah. About a, a specific one that, that refreshes awesome. your items. That's People true. Love that one. That's a good one. That one could be really good this game when you really need your BKB. Uh, you're not wrong. I mean, that that would be a huge pickup for Team Spirit if they could get it. For outsiders, it feels like any mistake that Team Spirit make, you run down the lanes, you just start beating away at the towers, beating away at those racks, and it's going to be. In the bank but refresher done double bkb double abyssal blade i mean it's so impossible for him to fight without bkb that he just buys it out right yeah like it's, it's better to have the refresher in his eyes than to have buyback and making sure that they can be ready for this next fight if it comes around 30 seconds left aegis it's not going to be used and outsiders I, I don't know if they really want to like just make it an attempt at a tower like in a way they can just keep on farming out the the waves put some pressure on with the illusions but it's hard to walk high ground <laughs> everyone's just buying refresher <laughs> radiant <laughs> every hero you click is just like another refresher kaka's looking at it terrorblade's looking at it all these other items are so good i just want them oh, to my chest Aegis reclaimed. We still have the Refresher Shard on the Kunkka. And vision-wise, Team Spirit hanging on to this little area of their jungle. Invisibility! All the Aeon Discs done. Oh, and that's an interesting one. Toronto Tokyo, if he could get to this, He's queued up the Revenant's brooch. You, you sniped it in the draft. I was talking about it. <laughs> he was. <laughs> the Revenant's brooch against Terrorblade is insane. I don't know why you want the game to go this way, but here we are. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> this item is nuts. If he can get to that, that's a, another big way to... Tell me, Larry Cole, why do I want it versus Terrorblade? It's all magical damage. It makes everything terrifying. You can E-Blade him, that you can... Good. good. Very good. Um, also, I think that was a Wind Waker that I saw, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I believe Tron Tokyo has one, and uh, I don't think it ever got finished on DM. Although he's been uh, hoarding quite a bit of gold himself. We'll have to watch and see if Outsiders let them get to this stage, but right now these fights become... The 14k gold lead becomes much less important than any vision, any yep. good uh, opening, all of the rest of it, and of course buybacks. The first jump. Blink canceled there on Yadro from the Tidebringer, so it doesn't have an option. Still no buyback on the Tusk, no buyback on Ursa for gold. Mm -hmm. Same for Marcy and Dazzle. And outsiders, again, hang out around this angle. They're going to push in those illusions on the bottom side, try and take the range racks. So this damage is good, but the melee ones are going to regenerate eventually. Yeah, the fact they have all of their melee racks up too is actually kind of great because the, it's not that easy for outsiders to just like, like kind of go in and try and like YOLO for megas or something, right? They're yeah. too spread out at the moment. It's not like just like one single lane of racks. It's also not doing as much economical damage for them to be just sitting in their base at this point. And because uh, the, the waves are still worth a decent amount of gold since they've only taken the range racks. And in fact, you can get that nice bit of gold from the illusions. There you go. Oh, they're they're making scary. money. Being down. Kind of look at the positive sides. All right, we got a swift flank now. Finish up here for Ramsey's. Inventory growing here. I mean, this is one of those classic games where it's just going to be, you know, either one big oh. fight and outsiders lose it all. You know, you know why this game's kept going? Because why we haven't that? played America's favorite game yet, despite oh, yeah. there being four roaches. And so, Lyric, will I ask you again, when will this roach be spawning? I mean, if it's any indication, it's going to be early. That's what we've had, what, three times in I a row I think it's now. been 40-something seconds three times in a row or something. All right, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say 50 seconds then. We're going up a bit. I'm going to go with 42. All right, I like this.
or it's the meaning of death this game will be Roche. Price is right. That's what we're playing, those rules. Da, 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 da. I don't think we can sing that. Just, I just we'll couple notes. <laughs> okay. if, as long as I change the octave, whatever that means, yeah. I think we'll be okay. And What's it it's a really oh, long God. one. <laughs> it's, it's about as long as it gets. I don't know, about nine seconds to save there. I mean, so this is also going to be a really back and forth. I mean, GPK is going to be there a while. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> He's going to be in the pit. But, I mean, it's going to be interesting, right? Because if you do happen to be just outside of vision right there, if they feel like they have to stay around this area, there's a chance they might just bump into each other and suddenly that starts out what could be a game-ending fight. And then, like, what if you get the Aegis? And right. let's say it's still even and there wasn't a big fight, then are you going to wait oh, for the items? Oh, vision down. Mapushka just outside of range. They see him there. The X comes out. There's the A on this. Trying to survive the silence on the three. Yasha trying to bring down TM. He is left all alone. TM slowed down. And Rams, he's just jumped forward. Blows up one. The X comes out. It's Vigilite. Like GPK. Tokyo, just so many tools at this point available for outsiders, so so well played in that fight. And finally, Yamich gets his chance, right? He's been targeted down so many times uh, in the later stages of this game, but gets in there for the snowball save. Dyer, scanning. Step lively, now. Unreal. And yeah, on Yamich, goal. not only the snowball save, but then passing over the cheese uh, to the Kunkka in the midst of all that chaos. Very well done. And then Toronto actually had Wind Waker there too, and they go to save him a Pochka because he had it too. So I was like, oh, he can save him here. So he targets, but here we go, back in the real game. They reclaim the gem and three heroes dead for a very long time. And what is the call? Uh, did you have the count oh here? Do you know outsiders? Did you count five bullets or six? There are they at? Dyer's Do you feel lucky? They buy back on Marcy. They need everything Dyer's right now to hold on to this. And it looks like they're going to give up the Mega Creeps. But do outsiders push for it all? They've gotten the racks. Do they want to just try and end it here? 59 minutes into this game. Will they take the chance? Ramses, he wants it. Wants to end it right now. Goes forward for the tier 4 towers. They dispose one. Try and bring them down. The X out afterwards. The fight looks pretty good so far for outsiders. Toronto Tokyo not able to bring down anybody. Ramses has to go down. And has to win Waker away. Five. The glyph is there, but I don't think that they have enough damage as Team Spirit can only look on. Try and find TM. Maybe they can bring those tips off, but the Clover Cape is there. They find Collapse again. And 
with that, only one remain. GG call. Darksiders, they hold out for them. Well, Team Spirit certainly didn't make it easy for them throughout the last half of this game, but as I'm...